I think I have a come into the class also. You are behaving as if uh, Article 21 is there only in the class, right? So let us uh, uh, look at uh, the ethics paper this year. So what do we say about uh, the kind of uh, questions they have asked? Uh, the paper is mostly conventional in nature and there are no surprises as such in the questions. Case studies also mostly repeated from previous years only. And as usual in ethics paper UPSC is asking uh, more questions from uh, in a governance perspective. So obviously knowledge of a governance uh, is a very important to answer the questions and the question paper is also very lengthy for example if you look at the case studies the case study itself is 1000 words and you have to write the answer in 250 words questions also if you look at them the question itself is 200 words and you have to write answer in 150 words very lengthy paper to read it itself will take you four hours the right answers you don't know Right. So let us uh, look at the questions. The first one: Wisdom lies in knowing uh, what to reckon and what to overlook. An officer being engrossed with the periphery, ignoring the core issues before him, he is not ready in bureaucracy. Do you agree that such a preoccupation of an administrator leads to the of justice to the cause of effective service delivery and good governance? Critically evaluate. So this is what we study in uh, administration also. We say that uh, the rules and regulations, we say that these rules and regulations are the means to achieve the objective of welfare maximization. This is what we say. The rules and regulations are the means to achieve the objective of uh, welfare maximization. Now, what happened over a period of time is that these rules and regulations have become the new objectives in themselves. They have become new objectives in themselves, resulting in what we call goal displacement. Goal displacement. Right? And that is the reason why we say that our bureaucracy is efficient in implementing rules and regulations but not effective in realizing outcomes but not effective in realizing outcomes this is what the question says so what is happening is that in our wisdom lies in knowing what to reckon and what to overlook our the obsession of our bureaucracy with rules and regulations made them overlook the most important aspect of their functioning that is Either effective service delivery mechanisms and good governance, citizen empowerment, goal displacement has taken place. Now, for these kind of questions, as I keep on saying, we have to attempt the why part of the question important. What is the reason why it is happening? Once we know why it is happening, you can come out with the solutions. Why it is happening? Because performance of bureaucracy is evaluated in terms of their ability to implement rules and regulations only. Performance of bureaucracy is evaluated in terms of uh, their ability to implement rules and regulations only. They do not give importance to outcomes. You know, outcomes are not given importance while evaluating their performance. Because of which, uh, this is uh, uh, what we ta what it takes place: goal displacement right this is where the problem is and what is the solution the solution lies in changing performance evaluation procedures changing performance evaluation procedures and here you talk about the mission karma yogi please remember the question looks very simple but you have to put in so much of information mission karma yogi and what is the 
ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ मिशन का मैं योगी फ्रॉम रूल ओरिएंटेशन टू रोल ओरिएंटेशन फ्रॉम रूल ओरिएंटेशन टू रोल ओरिएंटेशन दैट मींस बीएसजी मस्ट फोकस ऑन आउटकम्स दे मस्ट फोकस ऑन इफेक्टिव सर्विस डिलीवरी मैकेनिज्म्स दे मस्ट फोकस ऑन गुड गवर्नेंस राइट so for this what we have to do as we have said we have to implement uh, bureaucratic reforms right training uh, modules should be changed through mission karma yogi so that they give more importance to outcomes than rules and regulations and of course finally performance evaluation also should be changed that is what you have to write for this question next uh, apart from intellectual competency and moral qualities empathy and compassion are some of the vital uh, attributes that facilitate a civil service to be more competent in tackling uh, the crucial issues or taking critical decisions explain with uh, suitable illustrations this is what again we study what we say is that value neutral bureaucracy value neutral bureaucracy may be efficient but cannot be effective value neutral bureaucracy why why because development always involves change development always involves change and this change can be successful only when it is proactive in nature this change can be successful only when it is proactive in nature and more importantly the change is always resisted by vested interest in the society the change is always resisted by vested interest in the society to benefit out of status quo to benefit out of status quo the change is always resisted give the examples say the case of women empowerment it is always resisted in patriarchal societies vested v e s t e d vested interest in the society there are those who have a self interest for example women empowerment is always resisted because patriarchal mindset empowerment of scheduled castes or scheduled tribes are obcs it is always restricted by forward sections of society because they benefit out of this caste discrimination for this you know you need empathy on the part of bureaucrats that is the reason why we need empathy then uh, you write this statement this is what we say if civil servants have empathy nothing else matters if civil servants have empathy nothing else matters second part of the statement is important if they don't have empathy again nothing else matters you can uh, underline this statement if civil servants have empathy nothing else matters if they don't have empathy again nothing else matters how so ever meritorious how so ever intelligent how so they ever efficient they may be if they don't have empathy they would always become ineffective for example as i said if you have to bring about in uh, you know, a changes in the lives of uh, weaker sections of society if you are working in the field of empowerment of women you must feel the sufferings of a woman then only you can be more enthusiastic you can be more sincere you can be more committed and more importantly you can be more willing to take risks also and then only you can become a successful administrator that is what the question says empathy and compassion you know what is this compassion what is the difference between love and compassion love is an emotion that we have for our people those who are known to us those who are related to us you love your parents you love your uh, your uh, family members you love your friends love there is some kind of selfish notion attached to it whereas compassion is what we call universal love universal love 
you know they are not related to you still you like them for example you hear about some kind of a, you know uh, say accident taking place in some other part of the country, world so many people died immediately you feel sad are you are they related to you that is what is called compassion you know, unconditional universal love is what we call compassion and this empathy and compassion they are the most important critical attributes for a civil servant to become successful how say ever intelligent you know as i said you know this guy this person uh, uh india is one of the most famous bureaucrats you know, he was very honest also i uh, ashok kenka he was giving it an express in an interview in indian express newspaper and he was asked what are the qualities that are needed for a person to become a successful uh, civil servant does he need the knowledge of a uh, constitution or uh, geography or history or international relations what is that that is required he said that none of them are required the only quality that is required is empathy that is what he said nothing else is required you must be able to feel the sufferings of the people for example there are floods in your uh, district imagine the plight of those people who are in uh, water four feet water for two days continuously without uh, food and shelter and sleep do you think about rules and regulations uh, before helping them obviously not and that is what the question says you need that kind of empathy imagine the plight of uh, people who have been uh, rendered homeless by the policies of the government in the form of uh, special economic zones imagine in the plight of those people they have been asked to leave their places in tribal areas in the name of uh, industrialization that is where you require empathy and that is what this question says yes pardon sensitivity training yeah you know this empathy you know how to how do you inculcate this empathy it you know this is this so you can inculcate this empathy from the childhood through value based education value based education from the childhood onwards you should be taught values right next the rules and regulations provided to all civil servants are same yet there is difference in the performance positive minded officers are able to interpret the rules and regulations in favor of the case and achieve success whereas negative minded officers are unable to achieve the goals by interacting uh, the same rules and regulations against the case discuss with illustrations same question and the first question we have repeated you know you can see almost the questions will always be the same yes pardon okay it to achieve success success in terms of realizing the outcomes realizing the outcomes success in terms of realizing the outcomes that's what we said rules and regulations are the means these are the means that are needed to achieve the objectives what is the objective of uh, bureaucracy to maximize welfare of people that is what is success here to maximize welfare of people to empower the citizens to realize the objectives of good governance these are all what we call success now as i said the rules and regulations are the same every year same 180 IAS officers will undergo this training in Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration. They will be given training uh, regarding the rules and regulations. All 180 of them. When they go to the district, only some of them are successful. Most of them are not. Why? That is what the question says here. Rules and regulations will be the same, right? They have to work under the same rules and regulations. but why some people are successful some civil servants and why some of them are not successful why because those who are successful they interpret the rules and regulations in such a manner to focus on outcomes the rest of them they believe that rules and regulations are the hindrances problems and they become so conventional they become so traditional they only focus on implementing rules and regulations what are the examples can we give here this is what the question says ethics paper is all about giving examples where the what kind of examples can you give here right here yeah. no no that's not required this is ethics paper right so not required so what are the examples can you give here as a district collector you know where you have used the rules and regulations in a creative manner to help the people on the other hand a conservative officer 
we have used the rules and regulations, regulations as an excuse for not doing anything. There are so many case studies that the UPSC has asked also. For example, you know, we you have, you have been asked to implement a development scheme, right? A development scheme, and the government says that these are the conditions for the people to benefit out of the scheme. For example, the person should be much be below, you know, below poverty line. The person should belong to the weaker sections of society, right? Uh, schedule cost or schedule rights, and uh, the person should not have benefited from other programs. These are the rules and regulations. Now, you have seen a person, he belongs to BPL category, but he does not belong to weaker sections. And he has fulfilled all other conditions. Should you help him or not? That is what, you know, there are two things here. Going beyond the rules and regulations, going against the rules and regulations. This is what you have to write. You know, going beyond the rules and regulations, going against rules and regulations. So, civil servants are not expected to go against rules and regulations. They can always go beyond rules and regulations. As we study in our public administration also, these rules and regulations and laws, they give inherent discretionary powers, administrative law. They can use those discretionary powers. So, in this case, it is said that the person, you know, must belong to weaker sections. Does it deny benefits to other people? Are you getting the point here? You know, you know, it, you know, the person must belong to weaker section. Does it mean that other people are explicitly prohibited? So you can help him. You are interpreting the rules and regulations. You know, is there any line clearly says that only weaker sections should be given the benefits? No. It says that you know preference can be given to weaker sections. Does it say that people from other sections? should not be provided benefits? Obviously not. We can always help the people. Right? Similarly, take the case of disaster management. Take, take the case of disaster management. You already have spent the amount of money that is given to you by the government. As a district collector, you have already spent the money that is given to the, by the government. Still, people are suffering from floods. Does it stop you from spending more money on the people? No. You know, because under emergency situations, as a district collector, you can go beyond rules and regulations and use the money from other schemes and spend it on this disaster management. You can give both these examples. What is required is, you know, as a district collector, as a bureaucrat, you have to interpret the rules and regulations in such a manner that you will realize the outcomes. That is when some people become successful, most of the people will become failure. Rest of the bureaucrats, what do they do? They are mostly conventional, traditional, and then they don't want to go beyond because they believe that it is their career which is at stake. Tomorrow, CAG comes and asks them, and they will be suspended. They don't want to take any kind of chances, and that is the reason why they will never become successful. Also, that is what you have to write here. Next, it is believed that adherence to ethics in human actions would ensure in smooth functioning of an organization or system. If so, what does ethics seek to promote in human life? How do ethical values assist in the resolution of conflicts faced by him in his day to day functioning? The same question was repeated at least four times in the last eight years. If you have written mains earlier, you can say that please refer to my answer in 2014, useless UPSC and give me marks also. Because they are repeating the same question, right? Before last year, that is 2020, also the first question was only the same thing. What does ethics promote in era, a human life? So, this is what, what is the first part of the statement is very straightforward. Ethics will promote era, a, a smooth functioning of organizations. As we study, you know, organization has a one structure, second one is behavior. The efficiency of organization depends both on the structure as well as behavior. And this behavior is influenced by ethics of people working in the organization. As we study again in the public administration also, what does ethics say here in case of organizations? We must sacrifice our self-interest for the sake of organizational gains. Right? That is what first part of the statement. Why? Because we have to realize the fact that our own self-interest lies in the overall welfare of the organization. If organization prospers, 
automatically it will the, it will be the individuals who will also you know uh, benefit out of uh, prosperity of our nation same thing if the country develops you also will develop so that is the reason why as a citizen of the country what you have to do you have to sacrifice your self interest for the sake of the country and that is what you know the second part of the question says what does ethics seek to promote in human life so what does the ethics seek to promote in human life this is what exactly what we are saying you know first and foremost what ethics seek to promote in human life is sacrifice self interest for the sake of the society and this is what we put it you know if there is a conflict between self interest versus societal welfare if there is conflict between self interest and societal welfare as human beings what should we do we must sacrifice self interest for the overall welfare and what else ethics promote in a public life what else we should be selflessness in terms of our actions then we must have empathy why because this is what we say this is what we study in ethics human relations are always reciprocal in nature human relations are always reciprocal what do i mean by that it's always give and take you know if you deceive others what do you get from others same thing if you are honest with others if you help others they will always help you next important thing that we say here is that you know we are interdependent human beings are interdependent we are dependent on others for our survival is it possible for you to lead a life on your own without the help of others and that is the reason why ethics say that you always have to sacrifice self interest that is what they seek to promote they say and then honesty they say try to promote honesty if you are honest with others then only you can expect the same thing trustworthiness fidelity in relationships there should be what we call trust between the teacher and the students between the in you know, a parents and children between the husband and wife if there is no trust there will not be any relationships if there are no relationship there cannot be any society there should be trust between the government and the citizens between uh, the producers and the consumers and that is what ethics seeks to promote you can write all of them right how do the ethical values assist in the resolution of conflicts by, by based by him in day to day functioning simple you know every day we face this conflict self interest versus societal welfare i am a businessman you can give example here you know i am a businessman what is my self interest profit maximization there are floods in my area and if i go by the principles of economics i have uh, the necessary commodities with me right and uh, there is huge amount of demand say water or uh, say milk or vegetables the price of uh, milk say 1 uh, liter is say uh, 60 rupees i will increase the price to 100 rupees 200 rupees that is what is self interest because i am the only one who is selling if i do like this tomorrow i have problem with my health the local doctor who came to me he purchased the milk at 200 rupees from me when i go to him he will say one injection 1000 rupees that is the reason why we talk about sacrificing self interest for the sake of settlement that is what it says you have to give all these examples very simple but very effective also right next what does each of the following quotations mean to you ethics is knowing the difference between what you have to you have the right to do and what is right to do very simple you know the same thing we have uh, discussed in the previous question you can say that uh, please refer to my answer to the previous question useless public service commission upsc right you know that is what we say what is normative and what is positive we discuss these things in public administration also normative means what it ought to be positive is what it is positive is what it is 
So ethics will teach us the difference between them. Ethics will teach us the difference between what is right to do and what is right, you know, uh, you have the right, what are the right you have to do and what is the right to do. I gave you the example again, you know, you can take, a, I gave the example of a, this a local uh, businessman, you know, he has the right to fix the price according to the demand and supply. He has the right to fix the price according to the demand and supply. Nobody can stop him. That is what uh, economics says. The prices are always uh, uh, determined on the basis of demand and supply. He can say that I am selling uh, uh, my uh, you know, milk at uh, 200 rupees per liter. Either you buy it or get lost. That is what the first part. What is the right you have to do and what is right to do? Ethics will always say that you, you must sacrifice self-interest for the sake of others. You can give public servants. As a public servant, you can, you can give examples. For example, take the case of that you are a police officer. In a huge amount of mob, they are demanding a, a, some kind of justice from the government, farmers. As a police officer, you have the right to take action against them. Lottie charge, you know, tear gas shells. But is it right? What is legal need not be moral. You know, they are the ones who are, you know, uh, asking for their genuine demands. Should you be beating them? That is what you see almost all over the country. You know, poor teachers are coming out of the streets demanding more wages. Police will go and start beating them. India is the only country in the world where, you know, you don't find uh, the teachers having any kind of respect. You know, the reason why Finland and uh, these countries, Finland we say has the best education system in the world. Why? Because, you know, the most sought after profession in Finland is teaching. Even the president and prime minister there, you know, will stop when the teachers come, protocol. In India, you know what? Who will take up the teaching profession? Those who have completely failed in life, not the person in front of you. <laughs> right? That is what it is. Especially if you look at the school, you know, who are the teachers? You know, do they, do they get any kind of respect? Obviously not. That is what we say, what is right to do and... Uh, uh, what right you have to do the things. Next, again this question was asked so many times earlier also they have repeated the same uh, Abdul Kalam statement. This was asked in ethics paper only some time back. You know, the problem is that UPSC you know does not have too many philosophers to ask questions from. They have ignored the person in front of you. You're right. So that is where the problem is. Next, uh, if a country is to be corruption free and uh, become a nation of beautiful minds, I strongly feel that there are three key societal members who can make a difference. They are father, mother and teacher. So this is what we study in our ethics paper. You know, we study a topic called the sources of ethics. What are the important sources of ethics? How do we learn our ethics? You know, how do you know what is good and what is bad? How do you know? Yeah, first and foremost we say religion. But religion can be controversial because instead of teaching love and you know, compassion, more often than not we find that religion teaching hatred among the people. Right? Then who else? First parents, mother and father. We learn. For example, you, know, you can give some small examples like this. Father is a police sub inspector. His salary is you know, around 10, you know, 20,000 rupees. But they are living in a house which is which has uh, five bedrooms, right? And uh, you are studying in the school, you know, you know, you are, you are, you are a teenager. Is it not possible for you to make out what your father is doing? Obviously it is, right? Then what kind of values you learn, right? You know, your father is drinking and smoking and he will tell you, he will tell you that they are bad. Right? Similarly, you know, your father and mother, they keep on fighting every day and they say that you should live in harmony. You know, for children, parents are the most important people in their life because they learn, give the examples here, you know, why parents are very important. You know, take the example of this 2012, you know, this Delhi rape incident, Nirbhaya. What is common to all those five people who were involved in there? All of them, 
did not have any good childhood. They were left by their parents at a very young age. Nobody was there to teach them values. You have to give all these examples. That is what ethics is all about examples. Observing the society. Very, very important. Yeah, definitely. You can relate it. You know, even though it is good, but you can relate it. No problem. You know, the patriarchy, I did not say bad, but you know. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can definitely, you know. Don't get unnecessarily influenced by our classes, you know. You are getting highly emotional. We have discussed women and development and you are still yet to come out of it, right? Right. Uh, definitely you can give it. You know, the parents discriminate between the male and female children. And what kind of value they are teaching? Similarly, you know, parents will tell you, you know, this person belongs to our caste. And we belong to higher caste. We should always look out upon people from lower caste. These are the values. Right? You can give all these examples. And then of course, in our teachers. Now what is the problem with our education system? These are the things you have to write in the answer. They won't? They don't teach values. Very good. Why? Why? Yeah, that is what, you know, our education teacher system it teaches people how to be successful. They never teach us why to be good. They teach us how to be successful in life. But never teach us why to be good. Why should we be good? Why? Now, what is the reason why our education system is like this? Why? Because capitalism. Capitalism requires skilled professionals without any values. Capitalism requires skilled professionals without any values. You are a doctor working in a corporate hospital. What you have to do? Anyone comes to your hospital with a headache. You should make sure that he will spend at least 10 lakh rupees. Professional ethics. So you will tell him immediately that he has to go for scanning. Then uh, has to go for angio, then bypass surgery also. Looking at the bill, he will get heart attack. And that is the reason why they said that we are asked to go to all these things. That is what it is. Why? Because that's what I said. Our education system is designed only to benefit the capitalist societies. And that is where the teacher can play a very important role. Right? Next. Get you were success by what you had to give up in order to get it. That is how we define peace of mind. There is a song also, I think in uh, Hindi, I don't know if you remember. How many of you have uh, familiar with the songs in Hindi? Very good. Let me find out whether you know it or not. You know, the statement, uh, some of the, you know, some part of the song says that, Kuch pakar khona hai. Very good. You people are very, very... <laughs> That is what exactly life is all about. Right? You know, this is what we discuss in ethics paper. What is peace of mind? What exactly is peace of mind? Peace of mind is all about knowing what we are willing to give up. It is all about knowing what we are willing to sacrifice to get what we want. That is what is peace of mind. If I want money, I have to sacrifice my family relationships. If I want to name fame and status, I have to sacrifice my value system. Right? That is what the statements. If the judge you were successful by what you have to give up in order to get it. Look at the politicians. In order to stay in positions of power, they give up their values. Right? Look at the businessmen. In order to get more money, they sacrifice their family relationships. Right? Now, the question, what Dalai Lama says here is that, is this the kind of success that you want? You want that kind of success which is in uh, materialistic terms? Or do you want a real success? What is real success? When I become the Prime Minister of the country, does it mean I'm, I have become successful? If I become the richest person in the world, does it mean that I have become successful? 
then what is success? Depend on? Yeah, what is your mindset? What is success? How do we define success? What is success? What is real success? What is satisfaction? Success. If success is equal to satisfaction, satisfaction is also equal to success. Then why do we have two terms success and satisfaction? What is real success? Real success means making others successful with our efforts without expecting anything in return. That is what real success. That is what my good friend Krishna also says. You know, he has copied all these things from our class and included in Bhagavad Gita. But again, fine, no problem. You know, a good person, so we can excuse him. That is what real success. Real success means making others successful with our efforts. Making others successful with our efforts without expecting anything in return for what we have done to them. What? I can give my example. Right? <laughs> right? No. I am working for 6P, all of you know. <laughs> Till now I have not become successful, that's a different thing, but I will not stop, <laughs> right? So making others successful with your efforts without expecting anything in return. That is what, you know, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Nishkam Karm, right? That is when you know what you are giving up. Then you have that success, those who are successful will always have peace of mind. On the other hand, you know, those who are running after these materialistic comforts, position, place, status, name, fame, can never be happy, can never be called really successful. You are the Prime Minister, you have won elections. Again, there are more elections to the state. Then you are, you have the fear whether I will win those elections or not. All the time you have uncertainty because the more successful you become in life, the more insecure you will be. A rickshaw puller can sleep 10 hours a day after pulling the rickshaw for you know, uh, remaining 10 hours because he does not have any attachments. On the other hand, if you are a Prime Minister or a, the richest businessman in the country, someone else will be there behind you all the time. You are so much attached to those success, you are willing to sacrifice everything. At the end of the day, you don't have anything also. That is what the question says. That is the reason why judge by, judge by your success by what you have to give up in order to get what you want. If you are giving up your mental peace of mind, if you are giving up your relations, if you are giving up your uh, uh, you know happiness, that is not real success. Right? Then, uh, what do you understand by the term good governance? How far recent initiatives in terms of e-governance steps taken by the state have helped in the uh, have helped the beneficiaries discuss with suitable examples because at least one question should be there praising our prime minister right so that is the reason why this question was asked what do you understand by good governance what did we say good governance you know i am not talking about the eight important features of good governance which you are uh, telling me like uh, kindergarten students you know two plus two four like that you are telling me not that one what is good governance what is the difference between governance and good governance? As we discussed, governance is the process of taking decisions and implementing those decisions. Good governance means while performing this task, you must ensure all those features, transparency, accountability, decentralization, participation. Good governance ultimate objective is to maximize welfare for maximum number of people. You are using good governance as an instrument to empower citizens. How far the recent initiatives in terms of e-governance helps uh, in uh, beneficiaries? So what are the recent in initiatives in e-governance that have helped the people? Recently, DBT, direct benefits transfer. That is what our Prime Minister has said. He said that uh, we have uh, ensured a lot of transparency, right, information. Why? Because 
Now the beneficiary is no. Through e governance, what are the benefits they are supposed to get? When they are supposed to get those benefits, and if they don't get the benefits, what kind of grievance reducal mechanisms exist also? That is what we say uh, good governance ultimately. Syrian charters, you can give the example. Social audits, you can give the example. And of course, this DBT, wherein uh, you know, there will be Jandhan, Adhar, and mobile linkages. So that we are able to remove corruption, ensure a timely delivery of services. Give the examples of uh, DBT in the form of PM Kisan, in the form of uh, uh, you know the benefits the government had given to them during the corona times. Right, NREGA, the wages are right now credited into the accounts of the people on a real time basis. And the social audits are helping. Why? Because what is happening is that the recommendations of the social audit committees are digitalized and they are being put on the websites for the people to go through also. You can give all those examples. Next, online methodology, the question itself is 500 words, so you have to write 150 words also, you know, don't call it this as ethics paper, you call it as in English language you have precise writing, that is what it is, right. Online methodology is being used for day to day meetings, institutional approvals in the administration, Zoom calls, you must have heard about the Zoom calls, right? Zoom and boom calls, right? Institutional approval in the administration and for teaching and learning in education sector to extend that telemedicine in the health sector is getting popular with the approval of competent authorities also. Education also, we have so many educational, uh, you know, even our class also is being right now telecast live online, right? So that is what it says. No doubt it has advantages and disadvantages for both beneficiaries and the system at the large. Discuss the ethical issues involved in the use of online method particularly to the vulnerable sections of society. The same question last year was also asked, they have repeated the question with uh, some kind of differences. So what is the basic problem with uh, this uh, IT information technology? Especially what are the ethical issues involved in online method, particularly the vulnerable sections of society. First and foremost, as we discuss later also on Monday, we will be discussing all of them as part of e-governance. You know, first and foremost, digital divide. We have so much of digital divide in the country. And you have to give the examples here. Take the case of the corona times. During the corona times, especially children in rural areas have been completely left out of education process. You give the uh, you know, statistics also. Almost 40% of the children had left the education system also, especially in rural areas, because they do not have access to online methodology. First and foremost, the problem is with the digital divide, ethical issue. Why? Because all these digital applications are available only to rich and middle class and urban sections of society. That is what. Another problem with uh, you know, this online education is, uh, you know, especially for vulnerable sections, what are the other problems? Can you think about other problems? Content that is available on online, especially for children. There is no control. Yes. Yeah, ethical. Yeah, obviously, you know, it is available to only some people. Then what, are the, what else are the ethical issues? You know, it should be benefiting the poorest and weakest sections of society. Are they benefiting out of it? According to the latest information of the government, only 20% of the people in our country have access to broadband. Right? What about remaining 80%? What about people in rural areas? Especially the poorest of the poor people. How do they access the online classes? Do they have laptops and computers? Then how do they access? Is it possible for them to access online classes? They have been completely left out of the education process. That is what United Nations also has said that in India in the last two years of Corona, because of this, you know, almost 40% of the children in rural areas have been left out of the entire education system. Right? Next, what are the other, other ethical issues in, involved in online? I said the content. In you know, a children, you know, they do not know 
what is right and what is wrong also they can be easily influenced by you know content that is available on online next what are the other problems with online what is the next ethical issue now the question is about online right next problem is isolated completely isolated yes you know yesterday times of india editorial also spoke about the same thing as i keep on saying you have to read the newspapers and remember the important points right immediately remember the point and you have to write in the answers what the editorial the other day has spoken about is that this online education it has completely destroyed social fabric of the country especially among the children you know when they go to the school they are not only going there for education but also to develop social relationships social bonding if you are sitting in, in your home and standing sitting in front of your laptop or computer and mobile all the time where is the question of developing social relationships and this is also a major ethical issue and another thing is that it has also you know reduced the physical activity of children physical activity and it can lead to so many in the future lifestyle diseases also because children that is when the physical activities are very very important it can lead to so many lifestyle diseases in the future also and another thing is that with online is that they are living in virtual world with online virtual world whatsapp groups and everything else right even in schools also children have these whatsapp groups they are living in virtual world right so they don't know any practical knowledge about the real aspects of life this is another problem you know they don't have any practical knowledge about real aspects of life they don't know anything about real aspects of life because of this uh, virtual world and if they see something in real life they think that it is also part of virtual world if they see accident on the road they have seen so much of blood you know on their television screens they lose empathy also this is another ethical issue they simply lose empathy for the problems of others that is what we are saying you know we are talking about every section we are not only talking about vulnerable sections you know discuss the ethical issues in the use of online method particularly that means we have to talk about other sections and we have to focus on vulnerable sections also we have to talk about everyone and then we have to talk about vulnerable sections also right so this is what you have to write ha huh? elimination they have given as i said the you know the question is 500 words you don't have to worry what is the what is the problem with telemedicine the problem with telemedicine is that again the most important aspect about uh, uh, this uh, health sector is personal interaction between the doctor and the patient in telemedicine do you have that kind of interaction you know you know you can go to the your doctor you can speak to him in front of him and then uh, you have the privacy also but in telemedicine you have that kind of privacy because what are the conversation will be going to the uh, there is a uh, you know, medical agents also so obviously it will be problematic right privacy is what is more important with online there is no privacy i cannot be discussing all my problems with uh, you know everyone in front of online in online obviously that is what happens in uh, telemedicine and other uh, video conferences in everywhere next russia and ukraine war has been going on and for uh, the last 7 months different countries have taken independent stance and actions keeping in view of their national interests we are all aware that uh, the war has its own impact on the different aspects of society including human tragedy what are those ethical issues that are critical crucial to be considered while launching the war and its continuation so far illustrate with justification the ethical issues involved, involved in the given state of affairs i have given this uh, same topic as a uh, essay in our test series upsc has given it as ethics question copy as i said you know uh, the intellectual property rights so russia and ukraine uh, the, every country has taken its own stand and war is always bad 
what are the ethical issues that are crucial to be considered while launching the war and its continuation so far right what are the ethical issues that you must consider while launching the war and continuation of the war that is what the question says illustrate with justification ethical issues involved in the given state of affairs why Russia has launched the war is it ethically justified is it ethically justified for Russia to continue the war that is what the question says so they have given Russia and Ukraine in specific and we are, have to answer the answer in a we have to provide the answer in a generic form why should the countries go to war what kind of ethical issues that you should consider while going to war when war is justified ethically that is what the question says when war is justified ethically yes war is justified ethically only when the sovereignty of the country is threatened only when the sovereignty of the country is threatened that means wars should only be for defensive purposes if you remember that is what we have said in a first and second world wars they were wars of offense not a defense the wars should only be fought for defensive purposes if the safety of your country is threatened security of the country is threatened your borders are occupied your sovereignty is threatened then only you should fight a war right that is the only justification ethical justification for war and before fighting war what should we do we must look for all other ways to prevent war look for all other means to prevent war see if a other country becomes completely irrational you cannot uh, you know you cannot uh, stop it before that we must look for all other means to prevent war it also means compromising your interest for a short period of time because the costs of war are very very high it results in untold human tragedy unimaginable destruction so if you have to make some kind of compromise it is fine in the interest of the people of your country also war should be the last resort and can never be the first option that is what we say it should be the last resort and can never be the first option and uh, for how long should you know this war should be continued that is what second part of the question says how long should the war be continued for how long the war should be continued so you if you are you know there is no justification for war you know if you are starting it on your own now coming back here russia and ukraine what is the justification given by russia for going to war with ukraine russia has said that ukraine's attempt to become part of nato makes russia vulnerable to western powers if ukraine becomes part of nato then the nuclear warheads can come up to russian borders and it is only 150 kilometers from moscow so russia has said that we are filled we have we have felt threatened we kept on telling ukraine not to become part of nato and since the ukraine had not heard us we are going to war with uh, uh, ukraine that is what russia has said and it has said that it will continue to war till ukraine has agreed to become you know neutral in the fight between russia and western countries ukraine has said that they will retain independence in their foreign policy because of which till now even the war is continued and uh, and uh, for how long it you know it can be continue as i said war can never be justified for any reason so there is no justification for continuation of war also there is absolutely no justification for continuation of war also right why you know why do we say there is no justification the same things what do ethics teach us in case of a conflict between self interest and societal welfare self interest should be sacrificed for the overall welfare of the society the same thing we say that is what you write ethics in international relations also teaches that self interest must be sacrificed for the overall peace and prosperity of the world a country must sacrifice its self interest because it must realize the fact that 
its self interest lies in overall peace and prosperity thanks to this russia ukraine war who is suffering the most russia itself right that is the reason why there is no justification for continuation of that is what you have to write obviously you know unless you, your name is hitler you know otherwise there is no justification now that's what that's why we are saying there is no justification right write the short notes on the following in 30 words each constitutional morality how can you write constitutional morality in 30 words what is constitutional morality last year the same question was asked in your polity governance paper also for 150 words what is constitutional morality what is constitutional morality what is it yes due process of law what is morality here and how it is related to the constitution while implementing the ideals of constitution it should be on the basis of simple ethics and morals simple constitutional morality for example when supreme court has said that women should be allowed inside inside in a, the temple in kerala right what is that shabrimala yes where women are not allowed that is based on constitutional morality in a constitution says that there should not be any discrimination on the basis of gender constitutional morality you are using the same moral principles in the constitution to come out with your own judgments that is what is called constitutional morality when the government gives says that they are giving free food grains to people living below poverty line during corona it is based on constitutional morality right to life and liberty is part of fundamental rights conflict of interest uh, how do you define constitutional morality in 30 words it are uh, actions of institutions actions of institutions based on ethical principles while interpreting constitution based on ethical principles while interpreting constitution that means you are taking actions on basis of ethical principles while interpreting the constitution what is conflict of interest what is conflict of interest when there is a conflict between self interest and organizational objectives very simple self interest versus societal welfare or national objectives conflict of interest probity in public life what is probity in public life probity is a multi dimensional term which includes efficiency and values simple it includes both efficiency and values efficiency discipline professionalism honesty integrity selflessness all of them combined together we call it as probity that is what we say for civil servants to be successful they must be efficient and knowledgeable at the same time they should also have values challenges of digitalization what are challenges of digitalization we have discussed the previous only you know you have to overcome the digital divide digital divide right devotion to duty what do you mean by devotion to duty how do we define it you know you are not showing impartiality sorry you are not showing prejudices biases 
and partiality while performing your task. You are completely devoted to your duty. You are neither you are not showing any kind of prejudices, biases, or partiality. You are devoted to your duty. Next, whistleblower who reports a corruption and illegal activities, wrongdoings and misconduct to the concerned authorities must run the risk of being exposed to grave danger, physical harm, and victimization by the vested interests, accused the persons and his team. What policy measures would you suggest to strengthen the protection of uh, mechanism to safeguard the whistleblowers? That is what we say. You know, we must make amendments to Whistleblower Protection Act 2015. We must make amendments to Whistleblower Protection Act 2015. Wherein, first, the secrecy of the person is maintained at any cost. The identity of the person should be completely secretive at any cost. At any cost. Right? Under no circumstances, the name of the person can be revealed. And then, second thing as we discussed also, at present, 10 categories of actions are not part of Whistleblower Protection Act. It should be reduced. It should be reduced because the amendments to the Whistleblower Protection Act meant that meant that you know everything can be you know everything can be outside the ambit of Whistleblower Protection Act. Then third Official Secrets Act should be removed. OSA should be removed so that whistleblowers can be given more protection. Otherwise, what happens? More often than not, in the judiciary, the case is not about the corruption. It is about the possession of top secret information by third person. And the person will be arrested and sent to jail. Corruption cases will never be solved also. That's the reason why official secret act should be removed. Right? And what else do we suggest to strengthen the protection mechanism to safeguard the whistleblowers? What else? Anonymous complaints should be received by CVC. Anonymous complaints. Right now, these anonymous complaints are not entertained by CVC if they fall into these 10 categories. CVC does not accept anonymous complaints. Anonymous complaints should be accepted and action should be taken. And CVC should not insist upon the identity of the whistleblower. Next one is CVC should not insist upon the identity of the whistleblower. Right? These are all the solutions that you can write. Huh? Yes, it is related to governance part of ethics. Ethics in public services, there is a topic. There, all these things are part of it. Sometimes uh, we can uh, see the syllabus also. Right? Right. Then, in the contemporary world, corporate sector's contribution to generating wealth and employment is increasing. In doing so, they are bringing an unprecedented onslaught on the climate, environmental sustainability, and living conditions of human beings. In this background, do you find CSR is efficient and sufficient in fit to a enough to fulfill the social rules and responsibility needed in the corporate world for which CSR is mandated, critically examined. Obviously not. You know, CSR is different. CSR means corporates picking up social activities without expecting any return on their investment. CSR is different from ethical responsibility on the part of the corporates. So how do you answer this question? Corporate ethics, that is what we say, corporate ethics. This is where you start with Mahatma Gandhi. Whenever you are in doubt, always quote Mahatma Gandhi. He has a quotation for everything under the sun, including the sun and above the sun also. Right? Our earth has enough resources to satisfy the needs of the people, but not Adana's greed, sorry, their greed. <laughs> but not their greed. This is one statement. Second statement is 
what we say from ethical point of view the second statement we say is that deontological ethics deontological ethics d o n t deontological ethics what does it talk about it says that means are as equally important as ends means are as equally important as ends corporates cannot justify they cannot justify environmental degradation widening inequalities in the name of corporate social responsibility in the name of csr it is neither sufficient nor efficient way of evaluating corporate ethics it is neither sufficient nor efficient corporates cannot justify environmental degradation and widening inequalities in the name of csr give the example here multinational companies especially oil in you know, a marketing companies in america what did they do they went to africa they explored they exploited their oil reserves petroleum reserves africa and in the name of csr they have constructed a few schools give the example in the name of csr they have constructed a few schools in africa and they said that they have done great justice to this continent dark continent is it justified obviously not similarly in india also corporates spend few lakh rupees and they ruthlessly exploit the ecological systems so what is the solution sustainable development and uh, we have spoken about solutions in the form of uh, making environmental and social impact assessment mandatory for all infrastructure projects environmental and social impact assessment e and s a mandatory then we also talk about precariat charters precariat charters being made mandatory right please remember you have to always provide solutions also so this is about uh, right the section a questions yes ha yeah. i did not get your question hmm so what are the responsibilities that is what we have said you know corporates you know definitely industrialization infrastructure development is necessary but they must also make sure that it is not causing harm to ecological systems as we have said afforestation measures should be taken you know in both letter and spirit by the corporates and at the same time they must also take care of the vulnerable sections of society inclusive and equitable growth that is what is required and what they are doing right now they are committing much bigger crimes they are trying to whitewash those crimes in the name of csr that's what the question says next right let us come to the next question prabhas was working as vice president at stellet electrical limited i thought he was bravo bahubali <laughs> right when did he change his profession he must have changed his profession he is lost two films or flops that's the reason why <laughs> right thank you very much for giving such a, you know valuable information right 
So let us read the question. At the end of the day, answer is very simple. Prabhas was working as vice president of marketing at Sterlite Electrical Limited, a reputed multinational company. But presently, the company was passing through difficult times as the sales continuously showing downward trend in the last two quarters. His division, which Hitohito had been a major revenue contributor to the company's financial health, now desperately trying to procure some big government orders from them. But their best efforts did not result in any positive success or breakthrough. His was a professional company and his local bosses were under pressure from their London based headquarters to show some positive results. In the last performance review meeting taken by the executive director, he was reprimanded for his performance. Prabhas was reprimanded for his performance. He assured them that his division is working on a special contract from the Ministry of Defense for a secret installation near Gwalior and the tender is being submitted shortly. He was under extreme pressure and he was deeply perturbed. What aggravated the situation further was a warning from the top that if the deal is not clinched in the favor of the company, his division might have to be closed and he might have to keep his lucrative job also. There was another dimension which was causing him deep mental torture and agony. This is pertained to his personal precarious financial health. He was a single earner in the family with the two schools, college going children and uh, his old ailing mother. The heavy expenditure on education and medical was causing a big strain to his monthly pay, pay pocket. Regular EMA for housing loan taken from bank was unavoidable and any default would render him liable for a severe legal action also. In the above backdrop, he was hoping for some miracle to happen. There was a sudden turn of events. His secretary informed him that a gentleman, Subhash Verma, wanted to see him as he was interested in the position of manager, which was to be filled in him by the company. He further brought to his notice that his CV was, had been received through the Office of Minister of Defense. During interview of the candidate Subhash Verma, he found him to be technically good, resourceful and experienced marketer. He seemed to be well conversant with the, the technical procedures, tendering procedures and having a knack, to follow, knack of follow-up and listening in this regard. Prabhas felt that he was a better choice than the rest of the candidates who were interviewed by him in the last few days. Subhash Verma also indicated that he was in possession of copies of the big documents that Unique Electronics Limited would be submitting the next day to the Defense Ministry for their tender. He offered to hand over those documents subject to the employment in the company on suitable terms and conditions. He made it clear that in the process, the Sterling Electric Limited could also outbid their rival company and get the bid hefty Defense Ministry order. He indicated that it will be a win-win situation for both him and company. Prabhas was absolutely stunned. It was a mixed feeling of shock and thrill. He was uncomfortable and perspiring. If accepted, all his problems would vanish instantly and he may be rewarded for securing the much awaited tender and thereby boosting company's sales and financial health. He was in a fix as to the future of course of action. He was wonderstruck as the guts uh, of the Subhash Verma in having, you know, surreptitiously removing his own company papers and offering to the rival company for a job. Being an experienced person, he was examining the pros and cons of the proposal situation and he asked him to come to the organization next day. Discuss the ethical issues involved in the case, critically examine the options available to Prabhas in the above situation, which of the policy would be appropriate for Prabhas and why. Right? The case study itself is uh, 5,000 words. You know, it is uh, Prabhas uh, experiments with the truth. My experiments with truth. So, very simple here. You know, we can uh, summarize the entire case study in one simple self-interest. He needs to protect his job because so many NPLs are living on him. I am not talking about you people. <laughs> NPLs. Right? He is an old ailing mother to school going children. He has a house also which has taken on loan. So he needs this job badly. And this guy Subhash had come. He said that uh, I will uh, give you the papers. He can get the contract. It is a win-win situation. What should he do? What should Prabhas do? What will you do if you are in position of Prabhas? You will take the papers and uh, ask him to get lost. Oh, right? That is what you will do. But you know, this other guy is more intelligent than you. He said that give me job and I will give you papers. So what are the options here? Simple two options. You know, whenever you are writing case studies, you have to follow the structure. Very simple. First of all, what are the issues involved in the case study here? What are the issues here? What are the issues involved here? Yes. One is organizational 
the future our natural interest right in a, if they don't get the contract the division will be closed and he will also lose his job or national interest versus and personal interest both of them are interlinked here and personal interest self interest second ethical issue here is same thing we always say unethical means versus ethical objectives unethical means versus moral objectives versus moral objectives right these are the issues involved simple you know just because the case study is 5000 words you cannot write answer for 10000 words the answer has to be written only in 250 words then what are the options available to prabhas what are the options only two options one is accept second one is reject the proposal two options right accept and the second one is reject the proposal then what happens if he accepts what is the merit and what is the demerit what is the merit and what is the demerit merit is he will country his, his organization will get the contract he will retain his job demerit is his actions are unethical and immoral unethical and immoral right if he rejects it merit and demerit merit is he stood by his values of honesty and integrity demerit is company will lose the uh, contract he will lose his job right it will lose the contract and he will lose his job so now the question here is what should he do should he accept the proposal here now what is the problem here this guy what is his name subhash verma he is working in a company he got the top secret documents of the company right and he is willing to give it to the rival company provided he is given a better position right now the question that you have to look at here is that what is the guarantee that this subhash verma will not do the same in the future that is what you have to look at that is what ethical issue here short term gains short term gains versus long term interest of the company here short term profits versus long term interest of the company today you are taking it and you will get a contract you will take subhash verma and tomorrow another contract is there subhash verma will contract you know talk to your and the rival company he will provide all the secret information to the rival company and what happens that is what you have to look at as the leader of the organization should be should he be looking for short term gain in the process compromise with the long term interest of the company right so and then what will he do what should he do the third part of the question what should he do what should he do prabhas what should he do obviously he cannot take subhash verma in the organization because he is a person of a questionable integrity that is what we say for any organization the most important resource is human resources you need people with honesty and integrity that is what we say we can buy skills and knowledge and competency for a price in the market there are hundreds of iits and iims graduates we can get them in the market for a price can we buy honesty and integrity that is what you write 
and then what should he do prabhas here what should he do he has to explain the situation to his superiors has to explain his situation to the superiors he said that this is what i have got and have rejected this proposal also by giving all these reasons he said that i am working very hard to get the contract right i am working working very working very hard to get the contract and uh, you know if we get a contract it is fine otherwise i will look for other options also he will he has to say that let us diversify our business instead of looking for the government same kind of case uh, was asked with previous years also why why the problem had come up here the problem had come up here because the major supplier here is only the major major uh, you know contractor is only the government they can diversify the business they can have more in a buyers also and that is what he would say prabhas would say that he would ask the superiors give me some time i will make the company again profitable by reducing its dependence on the government why because today i am taking uh, this help of uh, subhash verma tomorrow again the same situation comes so in the long term we cannot depend this is what we study in economics it is a situation of what is called monopsony monopsony means monopoly means single seller monopsony means single buyer that is where the organization is facing the problem here he will tell the top level management that they must diversify their market find more buyers for their products and he say, he will say that if i give bribes or if i take people like uh, subhash verma in the ordination it will be causing harm to the ordination in the long term and he will tell them that uh, you know he will find buyers he will diversify the market he will also improve the quality of the product and in the long term he will make sure that ordination will be sustained in the long term that is what you have to write for this right i just said the question itself is a half an hour explanation is 5 minutes next let us go to the next question ramesh is a state civil services officer who got the opportunity of getting posted to the capital of a border state after rendering 20 years of service ramesh mother has recently been detected with cancer all the time problems only right why don't our political leaders have these kind of problems right have you ever seen our politicians suffering from health problems sonia gandhi is there but she still survives right has been treated cancer and has been admitted in the leading hospital of the city again his two adolescent children have also got admission in one of the best schools in the town same question right same question previous question only right then after settling down in his appointment as director in the home department of the state ramesh got confidential report through intelligence sources that illegal migrants are infiltrating the state from the neighboring country bangladesh and bengal ramesh must be from bengal right he decided to personally carry out the surprise checks on the borders of the border force uh, along with his uh, home department team to his surprise he caught red handed two families of 12 members infiltrated with the canadians of the security personnel at the border force in the morning also we have spoken about it how corruption can be a threat to national security that is how it happens on further inquiry and investigation it was found that the uh, migrants from the neighboring country infiltrate their documentation like other card ration card and voter cards are also forged and they made a settled down in a particular area of the state ramesh prepared the detailed and comprehensive report and submitted to the national secretary of the state however he was been summoned by the national secretary after a week and was instructed to withdraw the report the national home secretary informed ramesh that the report submitted by him has not been appreciated by the higher authorities mamta benaji because this is what is happening because all these people who are coming from bangladesh they are given fake identity cards fake ration cards and everything fake voter id cards and they are the biggest source of vote bank for mamta banerjee all these living with migrants exactly that is what is happening he further cautioned him that if he fails to withdraw the confidential report he will not only be posted out from the prestigious appointment from the state capital but his further promotion which is due in near future will also get in will also be in jeopardy 
What are the options available to Ramesh as the director of the department of the bordering state? What options should Ramesh adopt and why? Critically evaluate each of those options. What are the ethical dilemmas faced by Ramesh? What policy measures would you suggest to combat the menace of infiltration of illegal minorities from the neighboring country? Right? So similarly the same like the previous case today only. What are the ethical issues involved here? Professional integrity versus self-interest. Professional integrity versus self-interest. Right? Right now he is posted in the capital and uh, he could take care of his children as well as his mother who is getting the treatment in the leading cancer hospital. Then uh, what are the options available uh, to Ramesh here? Like we have discussed earlier in the previous case study, two options. Withdraw the report as recommended by the superior. Withdraw the report. So if you are withdrawing the report, what is the merit and what is the demerit? The merit is that he has followed the orders of superior, he will get his promotion. And he will also be able to stay in the capital, which is necessary for the treatment of his mother and also for the education of his children. What is the demerit? His actions are both illegal and unethical. And what is the second option? He will not withdraw the report. He will pursue with the report. What is the merit? And demerit? Merit is his actions are both legal and ethical. Demerit? He can be transferred, he can be punished. His family can be in trouble also. Right? So, what should he do? What should he do? He will not withdraw the report. He should not withdraw the report. That is what you have to write. It does not mean that you will do the same thing. After getting into services, you will change the entire report by saying that there is not even a single illegal immigrant also in the city. That is what you will change the report and you will give it and you will get out of turn promotion also. That is different thing. What you have to write here in the examination is what we are discussing now. Right? So what do you do? You will not withdraw the report. You will not withdraw the report. And you will politely inform the superior that if he withdraws the report it will be unethical and illegal also. And uh, he will also tell the superior that you are willing to face consequences of your action. You are willing to face, you know, you have to write all these things. You know, you cannot be laughing, right? You have to write all these things in the examination. Of course, while writing all these things, you can laugh in the examination hall. You will face the consequences of actions. You do not mind facing the consequences. Why? How do you justify your actions? What kind of values Ramesh is displaying here? He is displaying values like honesty, integrity, courage of conviction, devotion to duty. Right? Selflessness. These are all the values Ramesh is displaying here. You don't even know that there are so many values also. Right? These are all the values he is displaying here. Honesty, integrity, courage of conviction, devotion to duty and selflessness. Right? Again, what is the justification here as we discussed? What does ethics teach us? If there is conflict between self-interest and societal welfare, we must sacrifice self-interest. And uh, then, civil services conduct rules and regulations clearly specify that we should always be selfless in terms of our action. From ethical point of view, from legal point of view, his actions are justified. Right? And what are the ethical dilemmas as we have discussed earlier? 
you know, he has to sacrifice his uh, personal life also. But, you know, as I said, as a civil servant, you are willing to sacrifice your self-interest. You know that you might be removed. You can be posted in some other department. You can be posted out of the capital also. It can be problematic for your children. But, you know that all these are all temporary in nature. That is what you say. All these problems are temporary in nature. But, if you compromise with your values once, it can result in the destruction of your whole personality. As we discussed, slippery slope. That is the reason why you will never compromise with your values system. Right? What policy measures would you suggest to combat the menace of uh, infiltration of illegal migrants from the neighboring country? What do you suggest? Internal security. What do you suggest? First, fencing of border. Complete fencing, iron fencing of border. Total. Then, uh, CCTV cameras at all vital check posts, CCTV cameras. Then there can be three pronged security, one state police, border security force, BSF and army also. State police, BSF as well as army also. Then those illegal migrants who have, who have been caught they should be immediately sent back also to send a message also to the library country. They should be immediately sent back. Right? Illegal migrants. Then you need a better intelligence mechanism at the ground level. Better intelligence mechanism. What you call it as? Human intelligence at the ground level. To identify illegal migrants. You need human intelligence also. Right? That is what you can suggest. So, let us go to the next question. The Supreme Court has banned mining in the Aravalli Hills to stop degradation of the forest cover and to maintain ecological balance. However, the, however, the stone mining was still prevalent in the border district of the affected state with the convenience of certain corrupt forest and officials and politicians. Young and dynamic SP who was recently posted in the affected district, not you people, right? You are neither young nor dynamic, right? You have accepted gracefully also, right? Who was posted in the affected district promised to help himself to stop this menace. In one of his surprise checks and with his team, he found a loaded truck with a stone trying to escape the mining area. He tried to stop the truck, but the truck driver overrun the police officer, killing him on the spot and thereafter managed to flee. Where did this happen recently? Haryana. Yes. Haryana, George. Just animal types. <laughs> right? So, recently happened in Haryana. That's what I said. Ethics case studies are all about current events only. Police filed FIR, but no breakthrough was achieved in the case for almost three months. Ashok, who was the investigative journalist working with the leading television channel, CEO Motor started investigating the case. With, when, within one month, Ashok got through the got the breakthrough by interacting with the local people, stop, stone uh, mining mafia and government officials. He prepared his investigative story and presented to the CMD of the TV channel. He exposed the investigative report of the complete nexus of a stone mafia working with the blessing of corrupt police and uh, civil uh, officials and politicians. The politician who was involved in the mafia was no one else but local MLA who was considered to be very close to the chief minister. After going through the investigative report, the CMVD advised Ashok to drop the idea of making the story public through electronic media. He informed that the local MLA was not only the relative of the owner of the TV channel but also unofficially 20% stakeholder in the channel. Uh, the CMD further informed Ashok that his Further promotion and hike in pay will be taken care of in addition to the soft loan of 10 lakh rupees which he has taken from the TV channel for his son's chronic disease. All the time diseases only. Entire country, if you look at the case studies are full of diseases only. What is happening with Ayushman Bharat, we don't know. <laughs> you know, what is happening with PMJ, Jan Aragya, Yojana. For his son's chronic disease, will be suitably adjusted if he hands over the investigative report to him. What are the available options with Ashok to cope with the situation? 
critical evaluate each and every option identified by Azure. What are the ethical dilemmas faced by Azure? What are the options do you think would be the most appropriate for Azure to adopt and why? In the above scenario, what type of training would you suggest to the police officers pushing into such risky ways some of the many activities are rampant? Right? So again the same thing previous case study, everything is the same only. As you can see the more the things change the more they remain the same. That is the case with ethics case studies. So what is the problem here? Self interest versus societal welfare. Right? Self interest versus societal welfare. So what are the options available to Ashok here? Two options. And uh, hand over the report to the CMD. And reject. Saying that I will not give you the report. If you hand off the report to CMD, what is the merit? What is the merit? He will uh, get soft loan. His uh, career also will be taken care of. Self interest. What is the demerit? His actions are unethical, if not illegal. His actions are unethical. Yeah, because it is not, not there is nothing that there is not, there is nothing in law which says that uh, you have to do everything. The, he is working for a. You know, he has done this investigation on his own only. Right. So uh, there is nothing legal about it. And uh, if he does not hand out the report, what is the merit? His actions are ethical and moral. What is the demerit? He will lose his job and his life can also be in danger. What should he do? Obviously, he has to make the report public. That is what we say. Because you are not in the position of Ashok. Right? So that is what you have to do. And how do we justify this kind of things? For justification, you have to come out with the proper reasons. What is the proper reason you can give here? You can go back to Mahabharata. Right? The war is over. All Kauravas were killed. And uh, Krishna, he goes and meets uh, Dhritarash, the father, and uh, Gandhari, the mother. And Gandhari, after all, she lost hundreds, hundreds of her sons. The pain is unbearable. And she starts criticizing Krishna, saying that you are God. If you had wanted, you could have easily stopped this war. It is said that one-fifth of uh, total population in the world died in the Mahabharata war. 20%. She said that you could have easily stopped this destruction. You did not. Why? Why you did not stop this destruction? Krishna replied, very simple. He said that yes, I could have easily stopped this war. It would not have been difficult at all for me to stop this war. But we must also teach lesson to future generations. What is the lesson here? Krishna has said that all those people who were present in the court of Duryodhan when Draupadi was molested in front of everyone. Right? All those people have no right to live. That is what he said. When a woman modesty was violated in public, right? Those who did not protest, he said, they don't have any right to. That is the reason why he said that all those people who remained silent when this costly crime was committed, he said that he yeah, have punished all of them, including Bhishma. Bhishma also remained silent. Dronacharya, Krupacharya, all of them remained silent. He said that all of them should be killed. I have to send a you know, message to future generations. And he said that if there is a, any conflict or fight between good and evil, if you remain silent, it means that you are on the side of the evil and you will be punished. 
very beautiful and powerful statement and that is what you have to quote for this case study you know he has seen the crime committed in front of his eyes he has all the proof also if he remains silent it means he will also be considered a partner in the crime that is what we say if there is a, any conflict between good and evil there is no choice for people you have to be on the side of the good on the other hand if you remain silent it is always considered as you are on the side of the evil and you will be punished that is what krishna has said only pandavas they resisted this ashwadhamma son of dronachari he left the court saying that i cannot witness this kind of incident taking place in front of my eyes he strongly protested and he left and that is the reason why ashwadhamma was the only person who was alive from the side of a kauravas very you know powerful statement that is what krishna has said yes i could have stopped the war you know i could have convinced easily duryodhan to give five villages to pandavas but i did not why because evil should always be punished to protect dharma that is what he says and that is what the explanation you will also give why ashok should not remain silent you know why ashok should not remain silent you know today he remains silent tomorrow you know he might be traveling there only and he comes across this mafia they might even kill him also they might kill his neighbors his their family members right that is the reason why he should never remain silent he is not remain silent he should make it public and uh, how what can he do since his ordination is not willing to in a telecast this video he can use social media to put it so that it becomes public also nowadays we have social media also and uh, since he is uh, very efficient since you know he can become a visible blower that is what we are saying he can become a visible blower because he has to take care of his family also he can become a visible blower he can put it on social media anonymously right so that uh, you know he can be protecting uh, him himself at the same time also making the crime public right and then he can leave this ordination and look for any other ordination why because he cannot work at a place where there are no ethics that is what you have to write yeah. hey, he can give it to any other person that's not a problem at all it will not become unethical but before giving it to rivals he should resign from the ordination why because you know he had conducted the entire investigation as long as he was part of the organization so automatically this material will become part of organizational property only he should resign from organization since the organization has declined to telecast then it becomes ethical for him to give it to others and he is also resigning from it and then uh, what type of training would you suggest for police officers to such districts where stone mining activities are rampant you have to say that uh, sensitivity training and uh, to be given to the police officers they should focus more on what is called community policing we'll talk about all these things as part of law and order administration also they should focus on community policing they should focus on uh, developing intelligence at the ground level human intelligence at the ground level and they should focus on sensitivity training to police officers to inculcate values and ethics and uh, Uh, they should also be given training to use the technologies drones using technologies drones so that they can easily find out uh, these illegal mining activities this is what we say next yeah pardon threatening personal life versus that is the reason why i said that he can do that
that is what we have said ultimately if there is a conflict between self interest and societal welfare you have to give importance to societal welfare yeah that is what that is what you know dharma says ethics anyway since you don't know you know it looks very new to you but otherwise that is what it says right maybe in your past life you were part of a kauravas 100 <laughs> <laughs> right uh, right you have done mba from a reputed institution 3 years back but could not get campus placement due to covid 19 generated recession however after a lot of persuasion and series of complicated tests including written interview you managed to get a job in a leading company shoe company oh god of all the things <laughs> you have aged parents again the same problem who are dependent on you and on you and staying with you he also recently got married after getting this decent job one more disaster <laughs> disaster of the dios right we were allotted the inspection section which is responsible for clearing the final product in the first year you learned your job well and was appreciated for your performance by the management the company is doing good business for the last 5 years in domestic market in this year it is it is decided to even to export to europe and gulf countries however one large consignment to, to europe was rejected by your uh, inspecting team due to certain poor quality and was sent back the top management ordered that uh, uh, that consignment to be cleared for the domestic market as a part of inspecting team you observed the glaring poor quality and brought to the knowledge of the team commander however the top management advised all the members of the team to overlook these defects as the management cannot bear such a huge loss rest of the team members except you promptly signed and cleared the consignment for domestic market overlooking the glaring effects defects you again brought to the knowledge of the team commander that such consignment if cleared for even for domestic market will tarnish the image and reputation of the company and will be counterproductive in the long term however you were further advised by the top management that if you do not clear the consignment the company will not hesitate to terminate your services citing certain innocuous reasons under the given conditions what are the options available to you as a member of the team critical evaluation of the options what option would you adopt and why what are the ethical dilemmas faced by you what can be the consequence of overlooking observation raised by the inspecting team again the same question right same question they are repeating the same question same self interest versus organizational interest right and uh, what are the options available to you to sign the document saying that uh, it is good for domestic uh, market what are the merit here if you sign the document you can retain your job you can get your promotion also if you what is the demerit your actions are unethical as well as illegal because you cannot be you know selling poor quality products in the market shops unethical and illegal second option is not sign the document what is the merit same thing honesty integrity professional commitment everything what is the demerit what is the demerit you lose your job so what will you do right what are ethical dilemmas here faced by here here if you lose your job who will take care of your bpl family right old parents and your he also got married thinking that you have got job and your wife will take the same shoe <laughs> and starts beating you every day she will take the same shoe produced by your company and starts beating you right those who don't earn money especially males will not have any self esteem right so that is what so what do you do ultimately what do you do you will contact the superiors top most people in the organization you will contact the top most people in the organization and explain to them and explain to them 
the consequences of this action. Explain to them the consequences of this action. What is that action? Selling low quality products in the domestic market. So what are the consequences here? What are the consequences here? You know, it might result in profits in the short term because the entire consignment is saved. It might result in profits in the short term. But in the long term for any company, the most important investment is their goodwill. For any organization, the most important investment is goodwill. It is not financial investment or human resources. What we call it as credibility. You know, what is the reason why in India people still believe in Tata's? Because they run their business in uh, through what we call ethical practices. That is the reason why right from salt, they can, they are able to sell everything. Salt to supersonics, they are there everywhere. Why? Because they enjoy the goodwill. He will explain to the bosses at the top the conflict between short term gains versus long term interest of the company. Long term interest of the company. Right? You say that your immediate superiors are only concerned about the losses they would be incurring if they have to throw the entire consignment to the dustbin. They are not looking at the long term consequences. Right? And you will explain to your bosses also that if the company focuses more on its production designs and quality, they can easily cover these losses in a very short period of time. They can easily cover these losses in a very short period of time. And tomorrow, if any of the consumers approach the consumer codes, he will also be forced to pay hefty fine also. That is what he will explain to them. Tomorrow, if any consumer court takes up the case, then you will also have to pay a hefty fine. Not only that, the credibility would be lost completely. Not only that, the credibility of the organization would be lost also. Then, it, you know, the company will not be able to have any kind of business also. Right? That is where, you know, we talk about a very important philosopher, Aristotle. You bring in Aristotle here. Again, a good friend of mine, but not uh, same intellect, right? So, what did he say? He said that why do people commit mistakes or bad actions? Because they don't know the value of good. Why do, do we do something wrong? Because we don't know the value of good. Right? That is what you tell your organization. That if they adopt ethical practices, ultimately it will benefit the organization in the long term. And you give the example of organizations that have adopted unethical practices and have collapsed. You know, give the example of Lehman Brothers. 150 year old investment company, it had collapsed because it had adopted unethical corporate practices. Right? You give this explanation, Lehman Brothers, L-E-H-M-A-N, Lehman Brothers. Right? That is what you will tell your organization. And if they still say that we will go ahead with it, what will you do? You will submit your resignation. Because before they throw you out, you will submit your resignation. You will submit your resignation. And you have confidence in yourself that you will definitely get a good job somewhere else. On the other hand, if you compromise with your values initially, then it will only be slippery slope. That is the reason why you will not compromise. You have to give all these reasons. You know that you have done MBA from a reputed institution and you know that you are capable, you are efficient and you know that you know you don't mind taking some meetings. 
in the short term. Shoo. Right? That is what you will say. What are the consequences? That is what the consequences. Right. Rakesh was working as a joint commissioner in the transport department of a city. As part of his high profile job, among others, he was entrusted with the task of overseeing the control and functioning of city de transport department. A case of strike by the driver's union of city transport department over the issue of compensation to a driver who died on duty while driving the bus came up before him for a decision in the matter. He gathered that the driver was applying a bus number 528. Why only 528? We don't know. Which passed through busy and congested roads of the city. It so happened that near an interaction, intersection on the way, there was an accident involving the bus and a car <coughs> sorry, driven by a middle-aged man. It was found that there was an alter altercation between the driver and the car, car driver, bus driver and car driver. Heated arguments between them led to fight and the driver gave him a blow. Which driver? <laughs> bus driver. <laughs> Lots of passengers had gathered by and tried to intervene, but without success. Both of them must be Punjabis only. <laughs> Body language, right? Uh, right. Eventually, both of them were badly injured and profusely bleeding and were taken to the nearby hospital. Very good. The driver succumbed to the injuries and could not be saved. Who is the driver he is talking about here? Here, bus driver or car driver? Car driver, car driver, bus driver, I think, bus driver, could not be saved, yeah, could not be saved. The middle-aged driver's condition was also middle-aged driver, he is, here is car driver. Middle-aged driver's condition was also critical, but after a day he recovered and was discharged, right? He was a better Punjabi, <laughs> right? Police had immediately come at the spot of accident and FIR was issued. Police investigation revealed that the quarrel in question was started by the bus driver and he had resorted to physical violence also. There was exchange of blows between them. The city transport department management is considering of uh, not giving any extra compensation to the driver's family. The family is very aggrieved, depressed and agitated against the discrimination and non separatic approach of uh, city transport department management. The bus driver Deceased, was 52 years of age, was survived by his wife and two school going, uh, uh, college school uh, or college going daughters. Everywhere the same problem. <laughs> he was the sole earner of the family. The city department workers union took up this case and when found no favorable response from the management decided to go on strike. The union's demand was twofold. First was full extra compensation as given to other drivers who died on duty and second employment to one family member. The strike has continued for 10 days and uh, did not remain. What are the options available to Rakesh to meet the above situation? Critically examine the options available. What are the ethical dilemmas faced by the Rakesh? What are the course of action would Rakesh have? So, Rakesh is uh, the joint commissioner in the transport department. The workers, these bus drivers are, are on strike. They are on strike for 10 days. Right? They are on strike for 10 days. They are demanding full compensation as well as job to one of the family members. The government has said no. And what you will do under those circumstances? That is what the question is. So what are the ethical issues involved here? What are the ethical issues involved here? Here, uh, here we talk about humanitarian aid versus code of conduct, code of conduct, they want aid versus code of conduct, the rules and regulations. The workers are saying that treat this as only accident and pay full compensation to the driver and also give a job as part of humanitarian aid. But the code of conduct clearly mentions that you know, this here, the entire issue was with the bus driver only. He was the one who started it. He was the one who was uh, fighting and uh, ultimately he was the one who died. 
so this is what and uh, another problem here is that in the second problem here is discipline versus ethics and moral for example here the workers are going on strike right they are on strike for 10 days if uh, you give them if you you know as uh, the joint commissioner there if you accept their demands what happens they will be blackmailing you for everything that is what we say the discipline here in our nation on other hand it is the responsibility on your shoulders to take care of the deceased driver's family also what do you do under those circumstances right what are the options available here what are the options available here two options as usual accept the demand and reject the demand of others what is the merit here if you accept the demand workers will immediately stop the strike right they will get back to their duties problem is also solved what is the demerit here what is the demerit here it shows that you are not a tough leader the organization why because the moment the people go on strike you will uh, immediately accept their demands this is very important you know organizational interest in the long term can be adversely impacted tomorrow the workers say that uh, our salary should be increased on a daily basis otherwise we will go on strike they know that you are a weak leader that is very important the organizational discipline will be completely destroyed and then if you reject their demands the merit is that it shows that you are a very tough leader who will be willing to put organizational interest above anything else and you cannot be blackmailed you cannot be you know influenced or dominated by others what is the demerit here this uh, driver has worked with organization for few, you know for a long period of time it is the moral responsibility of organization to take care of the driver strike or no strike it is the moral responsibility right all of us are human beings including punjabis also there is a question mark is there but they are also right you know they get angry and they use body language sometimes all of us are like that only right so can you punish the family for what he has done can you punish the family for what he has done obviously not so what do you do what is the action yes pardon it shows the merit is that you know by rejecting the demands of the workers you know and asking them to come back to work by ending their strike you are showing to the workers that you are a very tough leader who is not at all afraid of taking unpopular decisions also that is the thing you will say that if you don't if they don't come back to the work they will be removed our nation will hire new people there are so many people who are looking for jobs you know most of the punjabis are going to canada to work as drivers they can work here also right so that is what very bad you know you cannot be making fun of people like this but the good thing is that we are bad people only so we can do bad things right so coming back here what he should do era what should you do this is the course of action rakesh has to take first and foremost has to declare he will declare the strike illegal he will declare the strike illegal and will ask the workers to come back immediately to work he will ask the workers to come back to immediately to work otherwise their jobs will be terminated 
with the immediate effect they will be removed with immediate effect right so why did he take this decision you have to justify also why why because in any organization the most important part of organization is the discipline no organization can survive without proper discipline among its members right no organization and second thing is leadership leaders should always show courage of conviction and must be willing to take tough decisions also he must show courage of conviction and must be willing to take tough decisions also right by taking this decision rakesh is displaying all those leadership qualities what are they integrity then uh, courage of conviction devotion to duty impartiality these are the qualities that rakesh is displaying second what will he do once they come back to the work then he will say that he will say that the family members will be given enough compensation family members will be given enough compensation then he will also say that the educational expenses of children will be taken care of by organization only as part of csr corporate social responsibility of organization the educational expenses also will be taken care of by the organization and jobs also will be provided to them on the basis of their qualifications on humanitarian grounds on humanitarian grounds so how do we justify all these decisions as a leader how do you justify all these decisions family members cannot be punished for a crime committed by your employee members of the family they cannot be punished for a crime committed by your employee why should they be punished for a crime committed by in a the driver right and that is the reason why we have taken all these decisions we have taken these decisions also with the long term keeping long term of the organization in your mind with these decisions what you are telling the workers that organization is always there to take care of their problems that is what we call you are promoting a spirit de corps sense of togetherness and belongingness are promoting spirit de corps when the workers know that the management is on their side what happens they will also improve their efficiency they will also improve their efficiency so these measures will only help the organization in the long term because there will be sense of togetherness self us together belongingness belongingness among the drivers there they know that organization is there to take care of their needs whenever they face any problem and you have to you also have to you know prevent these kind of things happening in the future also that is the reason why uh, as part of the next measure what do you do you will come out with a strict code of conduct strict and enforceable code of conduct to regulate negative behavior of your employees to regulate the negative behavior of your employees right 
and uh, this code of conduct also includes that if they get into quarrel or fight with any other person in the process something happens to them organization is not responsible so you are telling them in advance that organization will not come to your rescue if you do this kind of cultural activities start beating other people right that is what you have to say to prevent this kind of negative behavior then he also come out with a, a code of ethics he also come out with a code of ethics to promote positive values among your employees he will also give them sensitivity training to change their attitudes and behaviors right that is what you will write for this question so let us come to the last question you are appointed as an officer heading the section in environment pollution control board to ensure compliance and its follow up action in that region there were large number of small and medium industries which have been granted license you learned that these industries provide employment to many migrant workers most of the industrial units have got environmental clearances uh, certificates in their possession the environmental clearance uh, seeks to curb industries and projects that supposedly hamper environment and uh, living species in the region but in practice most of these units remain to be polluting units in several ways like air water and soil pollution as such local people encountered persistent health problems it was confirmed that majority of the industries were, were violating environmental compliance you issued notice to all the industrial units to apply for fresh environmental clearance certificate from the competent authority however your action met with the hostile response from a section of the industrial units other vested interest persons and also a section of the local politicians the workers also became very hostile to you as they felt that your action would lead to the closure of those industrial units and the resultant unemployment would lead to insecurity and uncertainty in their livelihood many owners of the industrial approaches industries approach you with the play that you should not initiate harsh action as it would compel them to close their units and cause financial loss shortage of the products in the market these would obviously add to the sufferings of the laborers and the consumers alike the labor union also sent you representation requesting against the closure of the units you simultaneously started receiving threats from unknown corners you however received support from some of your colleagues who advised you to act freely to ensure environmental compliance local ngos also had come to your support and they demanded the closure of polluting units immediately what the options available to you under the given circumstances critically examine the options what type of mechanism would you suggest to ensure environmental compliance what are the ethical dilemmas you faced in the exercising these options almost a similar kind of questions here the only difference here is that in this case you don't have any old parents right and uh, school and college going children otherwise entire the case study is the same right so what is it basically you are uh, the officer working in the environment pollution control board and most of the industries in the locality they have received certificates but they are carrying out with the activities with the convenience of the local officials and politicians and you have sent them a letters that they must seek fresh licenses otherwise they would be closed down you are getting threats from unknown quarters and the workers also have come and they said that uh, you know they cannot you cannot close down those industries under those circumstances what will you do so what do you do yes what are the options available to you close down all those polluting industries right so first of all what are the ethical issues involved here what are the ethical issues involved here interest of the workers versus environmental degradation legality versus morality legality versus morality what is the legality here closing down all those units because they did not fulfill criteria what is the morality here 
what about the lives of all those workers and their families who are dependent on them right so what are the options available to you what are the options available to you first one is closed off what is the merit your actions are both legal as well as ethical because in the long term they will be causing more harm what is the demerit so one is uh, it can result in uh, danger to your life personal security also and uh, of course workers also will be losing their livelihood then uh, what is the next option allow them to continue what is the merit if you allow them to continue workers interests are saved and uh, consumer centers are also protected because they are producing lot of goods what is the demerit your actions are illegal and unethical right so what do you do under these circumstances what will you do you have to come up with a third solution you know you have to always have to come up with a third solution so if you immediately implement the environmental rules and regulations strictly all those industries will be closed it can create the supply side crisis also in the market it can result in high inflation it can also lead to workers losing their jobs right so you will be implementing a drastic decisions taking drastic decisions that is what kautilya says what does kautilya says kautilya says good governance means avoiding radical decisions to never take any radical decisions good governance always means avoiding radical decisions the radical decisions like demontization right you should never take them and change always has to be brought in an evolutionary manner changes can be successful only when they are evolutionary in nature so what do you do what do you do you will give time for these industrialists to comply with environmental rules and regulations then you will ask the ask ngos in the locality to help industrialists to help industrialists then third you will create awareness you will create an awareness among the workers as well as the local population among the workers as well as local population to you will create awareness among the workers and local population about not to about the consequences of environmental degradation on their lives in the immediate present in the immediate present how they are losing out then you will also request the government to find alternative sources of supply because tomorrow if these industries are closed down there should not be any shortage you will also request the government to find alternative sources of supply then next you will also encourage the financial institutions you will also encourage the financial institutions and the government to provide financial assistance to provide financial assistance to these industrial units to introduce uh, green technologies positive reinforcers to these industrial uni units uh, 
to introduce green technologies right finally with those industrial units which are still refuse to comply they will be closed down that is what the solution you will be writing those industrial units which refuse to comply he will close them down right so this is what you have to write for this question right as you can see at the end of the day this paper does not require any knowledge you can go to the examination hall become aristotle come socrates and write the answers does it require any kind of specific knowledge if you have public administration knowledge it will be useful because you can answer most of the questions otherwise do you require any other knowledge here of all the philosophers and everything else as long as you have the greatest philosopher in the world in front of you right otherwise you don't require anything so it is very easy and you know in this paper you can easily score 160 marks also out of 250 very easy and then uh, later we will try to do other papers of gs on monday we will try to do paper 2 quality governance yes same time three o'clock right we'll try to do on monday right right